title of our paper is Potential Reversal of Epigenetic Age Using a Diet and Lifestyle Intervention, a Pilot Randomized Clinical Trial. We became interested in epigenetics because we practice functional medicine, so we're concerned with genetic expression. We did our eight-week diet and lifestyle intervention. The diet is, you know, again, designed specifically to influence methylation. It's very methyl donor dense. There are a lot of greens. There are other nutrients that can influence the methylation cycle, such as beets, choline from eggs. We encouraged people to have liver a few times a week, which is high again in folate and B12. We also included a lot of the polyphenols that have preclinical data on them for influencing DNMT and TET enzymes. Uh, in, in fact, a lot of really interesting research, again, going back to cancer epigenetics and these polyphenols actually influencing the re-expression of, of hypermethylated and inhibited tumor suppressor genes. So we were interested in that, particularly because a lot of those polyphenols actually have very long traditional use histories. So for instance, curcumin or um, EGCG or um, resveratrol, luteolin, lutein, allegic acid, quercetin. You know, when you look into traditional medicine, we see, of course, you know, millennia long use for, for green tea and curcumin by way of example, but they're all pleiotropic in their effect, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, anti-tumorigenic, et cetera. And at least some of those mechanisms, I suspect, are driven by epigenetic changes. So diet heavy methyl donors, but also, you know, these methylation augmenting polyphenols. We had uh, we included an exercise prescription, which was at least five days for 30 minutes at a uh, perceived exertion of 60 to 80 percent. So not necessarily intense. We tracked sleep and encouraged them to get at least seven hours per night and gave them some basic sleep hygiene uh, tips as they requested. We did a meditate. There was a meditation intervention as well. So everything that we did has some evidence in the literature, either in clinical studies or preclinical, of influencing favorably DNA methylation. We used two supplements, a prebiotic, a lactobacillus plantarum. We did that specifically because there's some evidence that lactobacillus plantarum uh, may increase uh, endogenous microbial production of uh, folate, of natural folates. And we also included a greens powder. So again, the polyphenols that I just mentioned, those in a concentrated powder and our participants took each of those supplements twice a day. Outcome, we looked at the Epic Illumina array. We looked at a host of blood biomarkers, subjective questionnaires. Our chief finding, our most exciting finding was looking using Horvath. We collected saliva and then using Horvath's 2013 DNA methylation biological clock, uh, we showed a significant reversal of biological age in our subjects by 3.23 years as compared to the control group. We had a pretty strict criteria for enrollment. It actually took us a while. We started this study in 2017, so it took us quite a while to enroll because the program was rigorous and you know, the selection process was relatively involved. Mm -hmm.